Hello and welcome to Freedom Church Online. I am Paul and this is my wife, Karen, and together we are the team leaders of Freedom Church. And it is our pleasure to welcome you to our church online. Today, we have Paul speaking to us under the heading of Does God Heal Today? Healing is such an important part of our life as Christian, although in many ways it remains a mystery. But Paul looks at the bigger picture of what God has to say and what we can do for his healing to flow. In Psalm 105 verse 4, it says this, Look to the Lord and his strength. Strength. Seek his face always. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that in this uncertain world you remain absolutely certain and constant. Thank you that you understand all things. And today we want to seek your face. We come just as we are. And we ask that you speak to each one of us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to be with each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now it's time to worship Jesus. Seek his face as you raise your voice and sing to him. Be blessed by his presence. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace, bought me out of darkness, you have filled me with your peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Fearful you are. Fearful forever you will be. Fearful. Your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. Pull me from the ashes You have broken every curse Blessed Redeemer You have set this captive free Lord, I can't help but sing Faithful you are Faithful you will be faithful you are all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen In your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Singing faithful, you are faithful. your 
your promises are yes and amen oh, All your promises are yes and amen Fearful you are Fearful forever you will be Fearful you are All your promises are yes and amen All your promises are yes and amen Sing it Fearful you are Fearful forever you will be Fearful you are All your promises are yes and amen All your promises are yes and amen It's such a privilege to worship Jesus. It lifts our spirits and prepares our hearts to receive his words of truth. And now it's time to listen to what the Lord has to say to us through Paul as he speaks. Welcome as we carry on with the theme, Does God Heal Today? This is another look at this subject from a different viewpoint. The closer we get to God, the more we are healed. But firstly, may I ask some questions? How excited are you where we are at this present time in 2020? I mean, what a year. Are you filled with dread about what lies ahead? Are you frustrated, anxious, sort of concerned, just a little worried, or just not interested in what's going on in the world at all? Have you grown in your relationship with God during this year? Is your faith stronger than it was? Are you closer to God now than in January? How hot would you describe your relationship with Jesus Christ at this present moment? Very hot, warm enough to put your hands in, or maybe a little bit indifferent, cold? Can I just encourage you at this time that God is is in charge. He is supreme over all, he sees all, understands all, and he's never outsmarted. God is ruling and reigning. Maybe you're like me and wondering what's going on in the world at this time. Perhaps you feel like Habakkuk as he says, God, how long do I have to cry out to you for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell, help, before you come to the rescue? I find myself getting a little uh, uptight a few weeks ago. I don't know if you found uh, this year a little stressful. Karen, my wife, was pointing out that I was grumpy. <coughs> Excuse me. I kept on retorting, I'm not grumpy, it's you. And I know that's a typical husband response. But maybe you might be getting a little uptight with your wife, your husband, or even the children. Getting frustrated over the situation we find ourselves in again. Lockdown. Yes, I was getting grumpy and Karen was right. I have since taken stock of all that was uh, piling up on me and worked out what is important at this time. Making sure that we don't let our problems divide us, but unite us, looking and keeping our relationship together and building on our relationship with God, making it stronger. Most importantly, we have agreed that we're on the same side. It's interesting how little things getting on top of you and, and we were unaware of them just creeping up on us. We need to process things, check our behaviour, Ask God for forgiveness and not go back to them. In other words, keeping a short account at this time. It's been an incredible year. I think we will all remember this year for a myriad of reasons. I personally cannot remember any year like it in my life. We don't like it. Restrictions, even if they are intended to protect us, we fight against them. 
Several weeks ago, we were going uh, through the book of Jeremiah, and I was struck by this familiar passage in Jeremiah 29. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. These verses are true for us today as they were for Israel when Jeremiah penned them. But really, Lord, do you know what's happening down here? And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Am I not seeking you with all my heart? I know that Karen looked at this passage at Friday Church in early October and I loved it when she explained the context. The Israelites had been carried off to Babylon by the Babylonians as prisoners, slaves. God allowed this because they had been so disobedient and refused to change. Many, many prophets had told them, change, please change. The city of Jerusalem had been ransacked by the Babylonians. The temple destroyed. This incredible, beautiful temple that King Solomon built destroyed. The temple was so important to the Israelites. It was where they met with God. It's what made them different from all other nations. It had been removed because they had rebelled. They thought that they could worship God and how they wanted and that his rules didn't really matter. They thought he wasn't concerned about their lifestyles, that they didn't have to live as he had instructed them. And Jeremiah, who had warned them so many times, who had called them to come back to God and live his ways, who had not given up on them, was encouraging those people in exile at this time. Jeremiah said just before that passage, God says to the Israelites who are in prison and slaves, build houses, settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry, have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. He gives them many things to do in exile. As as well as praying for the Babylonians, he says, also seek the peace and the prosperity of the city of which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. His people were not where they wanted to be, in a foreign land, under a powerful regime that had ruled them and seriously restricted their quality of life bit like our life at the moment, a bit restricted. Their life was not planning out as they had panned it. Uh, uh, they were not living as they wanted to. Their beautiful temple had been removed. Jeremiah was warning them, don't get lost when things change quickly. We can get lost very easily when things change. We need to be so close to him. Avoid getting lost in this season of our life. But God, God always has a plan and it's always good for us. Can I encourage you to believe it? I know a lot of you have been searching during this year. I've been asking big questions myself, such as, what are you saying through this time, Lord? I trust you, Lord, that you have plans for me, but what are they? We started off this COVID time with uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, we know that our land needs healing. We need healing. As we pray and seek his face, God will reveal any wrong or wicked way in us. As we turn away from them, forgiveness and healing will follow. That's the promise. It's not that some people don't need to do this and others don't. We all need to do this to have the willingness. 
is not that God wants to keep reminding us of what we've done wrong. Far from it. We say sorry, turn away, and we are forgiven. And he chooses to remember it no more. That is that it's that the closer we get to him, the more aware we are of becoming of our becoming shortcomings. And the more he reveals to us and gives us a desire to change. Paul, in the first letter to Timothy, says this. He is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. This is Paul speaking, who was flogged, beaten, shipwrecked, imprisoned. All for the gospel. The closer he walked with Jesus, the more aware he became of his need for him. Still in his latter years, God had work to do in his heart. Not carrying around endless guilt, shame, no condemnation, just an acute awareness of his need for Jesus. It's not that Jesus wants us to grovel. No, it's more, Lord, what I know about you isn't enough. I want to know more. What can't I see? What don't I understand? Show me, Lord. I want to understand your ways. As we started our online church earlier this year, we felt also that Joshua 3 was so helpful to us. And it says, then you will know which way to go. This is such an important part uh, of Scripture since we have never been this way before. And it says we haven't, we haven't been this way before. But as we move, God moves with us. He leads us. He encourages us. No one has been this way before. We need to be so close to him to avoid getting lost in this season of our life. Can I just say that again? We need to be so close to him, that's God, to avoid getting lost in this season of our life. Going back to the passage, Jeremiah passage, although the Israelites, the ancestors, have been slaves in Egypt, they knew and remembered God's deliverance in setting the three. This generation hadn't uh, been taken as prisoners uh, to Babylon before. They'd never been captives. They had forgotten God's ways and compromised him. They did not take him seriously. It was tough for everyone. But there is always a promise in what God does. We have learned that God still speaks. And when he speaks in a still, small voice, and constantly, consistently and in line with what he has written. When he speaks to us as individuals or as a church to a particular calling, he will continue to speak encouragement along the same veins. When he speaks to you, it's often a life message, a cause that he's asking you to give your life to. And quite often, it's only in hindsight you realise that God has asked and how he has brought it into fruition in your life. The restrictions on your life do not mean that God's call on our lives is on hold. Far from it. A couple of weeks ago, the, uh, Joel stood out to me. The prophet Joel is giving the Israelites a message from God. The Lord was replying to them and saying, I'm sending you grain, new wine, olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. The promise that still stands today. In David's, uh, one of David Pawson's book, he reviews the, the book of Joel and he says this, this I think it's an important message for us to consider at this time. He says, in the same way many Christians today complacently assume that they will safely arrive in heaven however they live. 
In fact, sinning among God's children is more serious than sin outside of God's people. He goes on at the beginning of Romans, Paul, reminding us, his readers, that if they do the same things that they criticise unbelievers for, they will not escape the wrath of God. God has no favourites. I find those challenging words. There are consequences to our actions. Sometimes the consequences come much later than the action. God always, always, always wants to redeem our lives, to buy back our lives. The mistakes that we've made, the things that we've gone, the passages we've gone down. He has already paid the price. We must be careful not to give up on God and his ways, nor become despondent despite the difficulties of our day. But let's not leave it there. God says in Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And he starts working on our hearts. Samuel, the Old Testament prophet, was told by God, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Deep things are in our hearts. We need to search our hearts. We need to make a decision, taking it on ourselves to be discipled. We need to disciple ourselves to have an I want to know more about God attitude. Not of the world's ways, but of God's ways and his kingdom. They're everlasting. Sometimes his ways can be seem so far from today's world that we live in. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. That's not just coming to a relationship with Jesus Christ, not just being filled with the Holy Spirit, but I just want to underline both of those are absolutely imperative. They are essential. But looking much deeper into your relationship with God, seeking him with all of our hearts. Jill Southern spoke to us. Her talk is still on the YouTube channel. She encouraged us to look into deeper issues of our lives with an honesty and openness with God to bring his revelation to our lives. In such areas such as generational problems, Karen and I often ask uh, this question to people, do I still do the very things my parents did? Didn't they make some mistakes? Or perhaps rejection. Why do I always feel rejected? What spiritual activities we may have been involved in in the past? Maybe tarot cards, Ouija boards, horoscopes. God is still, and can we ask God, does this still affect me today? There are many ways, uh, many things today's world that don't help us as Christians to live a Christian lifestyle. We need to be drawing closer to Father God. Deal with these issues as they come up. Knowing as Paul says in Ephesians, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Those evil forces want to entrap each one of us. So to answer some of those questions I posed to you at the beginning of this talk, um, excuse me, <coughs> oh dear, and maybe hope to give you uh, an idea where to go. I asked, have you grown in your relationship with God during this year? Are you spending more time with him, reading your Bible, praying, journaling, or have other things crept in? Will his help uh, 
This will help in healing because you are drawing closer to him. In Ecclesiastes, it says, there is nothing better than being wise, knowing how to interpret the meaning of life. Wisdom puts light in the eyes and gives gentleness to words and manners. Wisdom is in his written word. That's the Bible. Then I asked, how hot would you describe your relationship with Jesus Christ at the moment? Very hot, warm enough to put your hands in, maybe indifferent, maybe cold. And in Revelation it says, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In this time, we have to be strong for God, not complacent, thinking that we can't do anything. That's what the Israelites thought when they'd been carted off to Babylon. We can't do anything until we get back to the temple. In today's modern age, we can travel around the world in minutes via the internet. So many people we can touch, so much we can do. Please, please don't bury your talent. Whatever we find difficult, let us remain hot for Jesus, passionate to tell others about how Jesus has changed lives. In my experience, I've seen the most healing come into people when they come into a close relationship with the living God. This is a secure place to be. He will heal us. It might not be in, the, in the, quite the manner we imagined, but a healing will come. And we will be at peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Then I asked how excited about where we are at this present time in 2020. Are you determined to walk closely with God regardless of what's happening? So just to conclude, my points are, keep a short account at this time. Secondly, get closer to Jesus Christ. We need to be so close to him to avoid getting lost in this season of our life. Thirdly, seek to know more what Jesus is saying about our lifestyle. De deal with the issues that come up. So I'm going to uh, bring this talk to a close. And I'm going to uh, give a reading out of Habakkuk because I started with him. This is Habakkuk's reply to the situation. And I'm going to leave it with you. He says, Though the cherry tree does not blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields stunted, though the sheep pens are sheepless and the cattle barns empty. I mean, things seem pretty dire in Habakkuk's life at the moment, but he goes on. I am singing joyful praises to God. I am turning cartwheels of joy to my Saviour God, counting on God's rule to prevail. I take heart and gain strength. I run like a deer. I feel I am king of the mountain. I hope that's you. Amen and amen. Thank you, Paul. I am reminded just how important it is that we continually seek God's face. When a life has been disrupted and there's change all around, when everything familiar to us is shaken, it's the time to come even closer to him and not draw back. It's time to hold fast to the one who is never shaken. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we believe that as we seek your face, healing will flow. Lord, we are sorry for those times when our attitude and actions have been wrong. When we have allowed distractions to take us away from you. Thank you that you say in repentance and rest is our salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. Lord, as we seek your face and come closer to you with willing hearts, we ask that you open our eyes to see what you see so that we can bring things to you. We can be free to rest in your peace. We can be quiet when all around is noisy and uncertain and we can be strengthened 
my trust in you. Thank you so much that your heart is always to restore our lives, for us to become more like you and for us to live in the fullness of your life. May we live our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit, never forgetting your love and mercy towards each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't work out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In my questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness, I will follow you My lighthouse, my lighthouse I will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore oh, 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 Safe to shore oh, 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 Safe to shore oh, 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 Safe to shore I won't fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing my God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness, I will follow you Whoa. My lighthouse, my lighthouse I will trust the promise You will carry me safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore Foul before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storm Far before us You're the brightest You will lead us Through the storm My lighthouse My lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you Oh my lighthouse My lighthouse I will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, and let us give the closing blessing. But, but just before we do that... Uh, may we just invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to each one of us. I'll just invite the Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit, would you please come? Would you come and speak to each one of us? Your children are listening. Come, Spirit, and bring your peace. Bring your peace. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. May the perfect 
will of our Heavenly Father be done in our lives. May the sacrificial love of Jesus be preeminent in our thoughts and hearts. May the Holy Spirit empower us to live for the glory of God and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please do contact us via the details below. Thank you for joining us. God bless and goodbye. Goodbye.